of God's word. Write this down. I've taught you, but let's deal with it quickly. The word of God contains three things. Number one, promises. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. The word of God essentially contains three things. Number one, promises. Don't forget. Number two, principles. Number three, prophecies. What are promises? God's commitment. If you will do this, this is what I will do. This is my intention for you. If you walk in keeping with the conditions that make this manifest. Write this down. You only commit God's integrity to perform when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles. You only commit God's integrity to perform when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles. That means that God loves you, but the only way to commit God in your life is when you walk in keeping with his promises and his principles. Now listen, how do we engage the word for victory? This is what I want to show you now briefly and then we'll wrap up for tonight's session. Please pay attention because this is where many of us may not understand. You understand these things I've shared so far, but the missing link for many of us can be translating the word of God into that experiential manifestation. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld. That means it should not just remain a mystery in the realm of the spirit. It should translate into the quality of your health. It should translate into the quality of your prosperity, the quality of your spiritual life, the quality of your advancement in life. Are we together? Number one. The first key, when you want to engage the word of God, pay attention please. When you want to engage the word of God for victory, your first assignment is to find scriptures. Find scriptures that apply to your areas of concern. Find scriptures that apply to your area of concern. Apostle, it looks like all doors are closed. It looks like nothing is working in my life. Every door I try to open is closed. So your journey with the Spirit, go and find from Scripture where were closed doors open in the Bible. Are you seeing now? The formula behind the story of that closed door, I taught you that the Bible does not profit you until you find the mystery behind the stories mysteries are hidden in stories if you just read the story and abraham did this and samson did this and paul did this it has not blessed you you have to look with the eyes of the spirit then you will find the mystery behind the story that's the profit from it so if i were you and I'm, i want to do something about closed doors in my life i go to scripture at least one or two scriptures is that true? There are many, many scriptures that show you how closed doors were opened. The most classic of them, I can use two doors. Number one was the door of the grave. Whether for Lazarus or for Jesus himself, it was once closed. The door of the grave for Lazarus, the tomb, was closed. But under a condition, it was open and it came out. So I will study it. Jesus himself the door the tomb was closed and it was opened and it came out are we together yeah i go to acts chapter 12 and i read there how that peter for peter it was even three gates that closed him and all of them opened so i now begin now i found a scripture so open doors is a possibility so i will no longer be asking god do you want to open doors that question has already gone because i found it in scripture are we together and jesus the same yesterday 
the moment you find it in scripture there's no need asking whether god wants to do it for this promise is for you and your children and your children's children as many as are afar off are we together now so i know that god wants to open doors now the next thing is to understand the dynamics what was done you don't you are not reading for open doors then suddenly you say let me pause a bit and read songs of solomon mm -mm. you are being distracted let me turn and read leviticus how they made the tabernacle except the holy ghost takes you there stay and study the area where you are trusting to find light in okay scene one peter was in the prison bound hand and feet is that true the doors were closed what happened the next thing the bible tells you is that prayer was made by the church unto god for him so i write i'm combining my ingredients now at least i want to know what ingredients are there first so number one i see prayer are we together i now write it down number two an angel came so i see the angelic ministry i'm writing down are you seeing it now an angel came for jesus rolled away the stone an angel came so i know that for opening of any door there is the role of angels there i expect it to be part of it i'm showing you how to make the word of god work there is a part of the equation of open doors that men cannot be involved in it takes the ministry of angels so i know what is the project to scatter that door that is open but how do you how do you engage it I've, I've written prayer now is that true i've written the angelic ministry and when they came the bible says when they tapped peter peter woke up so i see that discernment is also part of it you see that now because he had to wake up if he was asleep he would not know that his salvation had come and the Bible says, as they were parting Peter through the doors, he thought he was in a vision. So you need discernment. Because the person God will use to open the door for you may come in a form that you may not appreciate. So you need discernment. Now, I'm writing all of these things. By the time I find it now, Lord, open my eyes. In my situation now, how do I combine it? You are not Paul. You are not Peter. So now you are using the same ingredients, but you want to make something out of it now that becomes applicable for you. Ah, this is where the Holy Ghost comes. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from darkness holy ghost is brooding over every darkness you are causing to shine from now the assignment of the holy spirit was to make what happened in the bible happen in your life and he needs to now customize those ingredients because there are things you write there that may not necessarily be applicable. And whilst you are praying, how does this door open? And the Holy Ghost can tell you, begin to declare the ministry of angels. You may not know what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, are they not ministering spirits sent to minister today that be the heirs of salvation? You are speaking the word. As you are speaking, you are releasing their ministry. Now, you may not know. And then you are now praying. And the Holy Ghost will tell you everything men will always play a role it was jesus told men roll away the stone before he asked lazarus to come out so those who roll stones angels can roll stones men can also roll stones are we together now they can roll it spiritually while men roll it physically and so you can pray and god will tell you send this person a text and just use honor this is the man appointed by god to roll away that stone ordinarily that person would not listen to you but because what came to you is rema from god just before you call or you text the holy ghost begins to speak to him living is not profitable until you empower people 
the Holy Ghost is preparing. You see how he's acting it. He's preparing him to honor that text. He begins to put a thought of impacting lives. You should not, you are too wealthy to just remain at this level. And then suddenly your text comes and honor is the key for access. Honor is a triumphant usher. It can lead you with dignity into the heart of any man and any system. Listen, and whilst you are sitting, yes, who is this? Oh, I'm this and that. Oh, have you got a job yet? Tomorrow, come to my office first thing in the morning. And then the moment you are done with that conversation, just when you want to go to bed, God says, no, no, no. In the realm of the spirit, Satan can hinder men. You need to engage right now. And in this one, you are not just going to pray. You've prayed in tongues already. Get worship song and let it be with a dance that you seal this. I'm showing you how it works for people. So you are now dancing and rejoicing and celebrating. I will exalt you. You have lifted me above my enemies. And while you are doing that, there are angels fortifying. The Bible said the angel rolled the stone and sat on it. Let me see who will roll it back. Listen, by the next day, you have sent favor ahead of you. And the man sees you and you step into prepared blessings. And the door suddenly opens. And when people come to meet you and say, my God, we can't believe this. How, how did this blessing come to your life? And you tell them, it's God, oh. It's, yes, it's God, oh. But there are dynamics to it. In the beginning... The word. The challenge with many of us is we do not know how to engage the word for victory. So what we do is we just know somewhere in scripture there is a verse for prosperity. Somewhere in scripture there is a verse for authority over demons. Somewhere in scripture there is a verse for this and that. But the dynamics of it we do not know. I want your life to so command results so command results to a degree that you will bring glory to the name of the Lord not just for the marketing of flesh my brothers and sisters please listen to me I know what I'm saying I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables you listen to what I'm teaching you by God and by grace your life will excel in a way that will make you afraid You want the anointing in your life and you just blindly go i think you're anointed pray for me no no the anointing does not start with laying on of hands the anointing starts from scripture go and search the scripture there were people who started with zero anointing and by the end of their life and their experience they were marvelously anointed start searching be like a spiritual archaeologist journey with the holy ghost how did he start? I have found David my servant and with my holy oil I have anointed him. Aha! You have found it. So once upon a time David was not anointed. What did David do? Holy Ghost opened my eyes and here's what he, God will show you. I have found David. But it took a long time to find my servant. Until David became my servant oil did not come on his head the God will open your eyes I have found David but I could not anoint David the anointing is for my servants so I took David from being just David until he became my servant the journey of the cave of Adullam the journey of breaking and making that's what turns David into my servant and when he became my servant he was now qualified for that holy oil Lord what is the secret of being marvelously lifted by you and you begin to search in prayer and it leads you my son give me your heart give me your heart give me your heart Lord but I've been giving you my money nonsense give me your heart give me your heart what is in your heart your reputation what is in your heart the entirety of your self-worth 
what is in your heart your ambition what is in your heart your sense of honor give it to me it's not saying remove something from your chest and give me give me everything and you begin that journey with him lord i do not have the power to take isaac but i give you permission to take isaac and god says that's what i want let's begin that journey and at the end of it it will look like your life is a miserable life until god turns with you and says because you have done this to me i swear and i vow in my name that in blessing i will bless you in multiplying i will multiply you you see that at that point you don't just walk with god by emotions again your sacrifice has become a covenant this one is more than just power this is covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice at that point god will swear a vow on your life and say there is no meeting you will go to that i will not be there to defend you that one is god is it's not old testament new testament this is between you and god by reason of your sacrifice he will swear a vow with you And until you get to that realm, you cannot do much for the kingdom.